I do think that people need this in a nutshell. It's very misunderstood. We must separate subjective categories of people who aren't qualified to call themselves the top martial artist versus the top martial artist. These are the subjective categories, and I've tried to order them in a way uh, based on who I believe that people might confuse um, with the top martial artist. Number one, the best at Olympic sparring, currently, of all time, etc. This is subjective. This is, Olympic sparring occurs indoors on an unnatural terrain. Sparring gear can be allowed for to a certain degree within reason. But unnatural terrain, limiting it to kicks, of course not. This is subjective, and it's subjective who's the best, and it's subjective, uh, you know, how relevant it is. But it certainly must end beneath relevant. So how irrelevant it is, you know, is subjective, in other words. But it isn't relevant in terms of who's the top martial artist. These guys who dedicate their lives to this, that's a poor decision. It's like to get, you may as well dedicate your life to um, being a carpenter, uh, you know, shoveling dirt, okay? And say that who can shovel the most dirt in an hour is the top martial artist. You've chosen the wrong path, buddy. Number two, the UFC fighter. Again, the difference between the fighter and the martial artist is huge, okay? A fighter can be somebody who uses technology and, and drugs and so on and so forth, right? You know, and they get away with it because of their relationship with Big Pharma and the, the, the people running the, you know, the fighting ring or fighting circuit, right? It's right there in the word, fighting circuit. You know, I saw the other day a, a female UFC fighter called Cyborg. You know, they're spelling it out for you. So not, these are subjective. And they're, they're not, none of these are qualified. Uh, to call themselves the top martial artists, right? These are paths of non-top martial artists, if you will. Pound for pound UFC fighter. Well, who is it? Was it Cain Velasquez? Was it Bigfoot? Was it Fabrico? John Jones? You know, who is it? It's subjective, right? Rampage Jackson, uh, Jean St. Pierre, I believe his name was. You know, nobody knows. It's subjective. There is no valid competition to really determine these things. It's confusing. It's subjective, you know. Olympics a little bit less so. That's why I put it on top, right? And the MMA fighter, right? Outside of UFC fighting, other MMA circuits. Right? The next one is cool demonstrations. And yes, I put them all in one thing. We don't know whether the, you know whether you're cheating when you break the bricks, whether you're on drugs. We don't. There's so many things that would allow for you to cheat. We don't know. And cool demonstrations. And we'll get to that why it's not so easy to just take drugs or else they would have done just that and beat the top martial arts because you start to disassociate with reality. Your reflexes are improved, but it, it pales in comparison to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God conquered drugs and technology through sparring outdoors. But it wouldn't necessarily, I'll go as far as say, you'd expect it not to in a, in, a, in a competition that is designed by worldly people for the purpose of science scientists coming out on top, you know, and, and people trained by the pets of scientists. So when we look at cool demonstrations, bricks, right? Breaking things, okay? Moves, right? Martial art tricking. That's what it's called, tricking, because they trick you and they do a bunch of cool little kicks in the air, how many kicks you can do in a minute or whatever, okay? Weapons, weapons demonstrations, marvelous weapons, you know, my, you know, well done, well done indeed. You know, I've seen some nice weapons. I've seen some nice iron uh, shallon demonstrations. Well done, indeed. Well done in terms of demonstration. Not so much in terms of emphasizing the difference, but certainly these are entertaining demonstrations. Who has the coolest moves? Let's look at Scott Atkins. You know, impressive actor, right? You know, women think he's cute. Uh, you know, he does nice moves like a 720 aerial techniques and so on and so forth. Something to that effect, right? Cool moves. Michael J. White, right? Believable moves. He's a big guy. If he blocked and hit this way, pow. If you were hit by his massive legs, he moves well for someone of his size. You know, well done. Okay? Respective to what you're trying to do, well done. The best forms. You see beautiful wushu forms. Beautiful taekwondo forms and so on and so forth. Kung fu. Karate. 
right? Respectable forms. Well done. You're communicating the chi of this world, right? But this is not going to get you into heaven, right? Shinto, right? Heaven's gate. Do you get there by doing forms alone? No. And you all know this. The best Hollywood actor, right? Action hero. You know, Van Damme. Entertaining. I was a big fan as a child. Big fan. One of his biggest fans. You know, it brings me no pleasure to have to correct these people. I assure you. And to some degree, I will feel bad. But you have to accept pain as a martial artist. You have to do the right thing and accept various forms of pain, just not guilt for doing the wrong thing. Only some kind of twisted version of guilt for doing the right thing. You're not supposed to feel guilty. That's what I mean. Move. Well, you know, not in an ideal society. The best in combat efficacy, right? He must be outdoor sparring and I have posted videos where I'm drugged, mind you. You know, I've been sabotaged, even dehydrated, and kept from nutritious food. You can't truly see the spirit of God in its glory. You see the sabotaged hero. If you are considering my arguments, how could you miss the sabotage part? If you see a cheetah running with a 20-pound weight, should the wise observer not be able to tell that that cheetah is faster than that turtle anyway? He has a 20 pound weight. Look how fast he's still going. If you're running track and you're jumping hurdles, do you then say, well, you know, he, he only ran, uh, you know, say a mile in, you know, if I can, we'll call it 10 minutes or whatever is a respectable time. Okay. Or do you say, those were hurdles, obstacles, obi? Kuro Obi. Obi is king, his hut, his temple. Oh, you consider the obstacles. What kind of a dunce who should be silent makes a stated argument that doesn't consider obstacles? What kind of a righteous woman, when picking a man, doesn't consider obstacles? It's stupid not to see it that way. So now let's consider looks. Now, me personally, you know, I'd hate to argue with women over who is handsome, but then I remember when I was young, I was a goofy, soda pop, silly face little kid, okay? Sabotaged and confused about who I was, but I was a child. As soon as I start being 15, 16, 17, that's out the window. I'm insisting that the Christians tell the truth about the divine order. I'm insisting that the Catholic Church tell the truth. I'm making profound and respectable arguments since I'm about 15, 16, 17 years old about seek ye the kingdom of God. Don't believe this book. Jesus didn't even write the book. Don't believe the people that put him on a pole to be crucified who were, who were misled. They were misled. Relative to what you should do relative to God and man. Why should you believe the people who are misled as adults? As adults who crucified the Son of God as to what the spiritual order should be, the infallibility of a book. Why should you believe the people who used to do what they say and for white supremacy as German, German, Bavaria, Illuminati, German, Nazis, German, World War I, Kaiser Wilhelm, and so on. Why should we automatically believe these people, these colonists? These weren't the late migrants from Ireland and Italy. These were the first colonists that raped and killed Native Americans. Why should we believe people who are not even sabotaged, who are in their natural state of mind, within their cultural context, who rape and kill and justify it, and their culture just happens to include the Bible. Yes, you can learn from a, a, a story of someone raping somebody what the moral of the story is, but you shouldn't learn from that rapist what the moral of the story is when he will not tell the truth. And that is where 
the church is. That is where the Christian preachers are. They are pedophiles. They are complicit with government oppression. They are liars and deceivers. The book does say, beware of wolves in sheep's clothes. And the wolf is the symbol of the Roman people. So who are these guys? We see the white guys with the soft face, right? They tend to be gay. You know, their, their warriors tend to have a rough military face. The people who are more proficient at hand-to-hand -hand combat. These guys with the soft face tend to be pretty boys that have been put on TV, right? Van Damme would probably get killed pretty quickly by a more serious white guy. What is strange, and the reason why I bring this up much, is when we see black people, we see a difference. We see baby faces in people who are warriors. Now, don't confuse this with the Western-induced gay face. Right? Whore means face. Martial artists read people better, not worse, than other people. And whore, the martial artist of all martial arts, the archetype of the martial arts leader, and the top martial artist archetype. His first part of his name means face. Okay. Now, yes, in this age of chemicals and technology and GMOs and disenfranchised, marginalized people, should we consider sabotage? What, you think we shouldn't? Speak to those people. Know what they have to say. You should first look to the marginalized people before you look to the children of colonists with all due respect. God does not reward oppressors with prophets. The Romans didn't, in their own story, didn't generate a prophet from their own people. They came from, the prophet came from an oppressed people. Moses was not an Egyptian oppressor that betrayed Hor Horus in his original form. In the story of the Jew, he was an oppressed people. Now that you, the Jews and the Asians and the whites are the corporate oppressors and those who share cultural values with them, should we look to you for a savior and a prophet? Furthermore, there are token minorities who have submitted themselves to the breeding cycle of the corporate oppressor. When corporate means corpse, right? Body. Government meant mental to control mind, mind control. We shouldn't look to any American for a prophet, a spiritual leader, or a messiah. They, are, they were in the reproductive cycle of this country, of this country, not as immigrants who came here like my father, but as people who submitted to the mainstream corporate sponsored reproductive cycles of this country. All Americans from a long line of Americans who don't have an immigrant father should put their hands over their mouths. You are disqualified. The Spirit of God does not exist in American oppression, slavery, and the Native American genocide benefiters. They are not fit to lead because they benefited, they profited from the profit of evil. They have forged their body on the semen of rapists and the blood of the oppressed, and among them, to some degree, the righteous. You have no business speaking about God, none. Not unless you submit to the blameless one. It's open and shut. We must consider lifestyle, health and genetics when we consider the face, sabotage first and foremost. We must consider the difference between a soft face and a baby face and from what culture and from what people. Women have an inferior sense of who is handsome because of the gender neutral spirit that predates the mainstream LGBT movement that we have today. 